Hey there, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria. This is Radiant Moon Tarot, and we are opening up a new deck today. What just arrived on my doorstep, we've got the Kantiji Oracle, an ecological spiritual guide and creative prompt deck written by Ray Diamond and art by Laura Zaspan. So this is awesome. I love getting, um, I love getting gifts at my doorstep. It's always a good day. So we're going to flip through. We're going to open this box up. We're going to have a look at the cards. We're going to see what kind of book is there. We're going to give a little bit of a, um, a review about it and we're going to flip through um, so you can see each card and decide for yourself if this is something for you or if it's not something for you. So let's get right into it and let's open it up. I do note that so this came from Amazon. I do note that the actual box, um, uh, I had put it aside last night when it came in, and when I picked it up this morning, I'm like, oh, there's no cellophane on it, so I'm not sure if somebody had had it once already and returned it or something like that, or I don't know, somehow it just didn't get the cellophane, so anyways, I haven't gone through it, I just noticed that there was no cellophane. So anyways, there is the front of the box, very nice, inside, nothing special, it's just white the book inside very nice the back of the box in case you are curious here a nature-based 52 card deck and guidebook for the modern seeker so very nice there let's have a look and see what this book is holy crap okay wow um that is a very very thick book i would say i don't have a ruler here but i would say that's oh i don't know about three quarters of an inch thick for that book. That is one hefty um, book there. So it's about the size of, I don't know, about the size of um, about half a piece of paper maybe. So about probably about eight inches, something like that. Anyways, so nice and thick book there. Let's have a quick look inside. I'm just going to move that out of the way for a second here. Put this down so that we can all see it. So um, very nice. Here we've got the initial pages, a uh, little for the earth and for all who tend, love, and listen to this blue planet. All right. So if you're connected with the earth, this certainly might be a deck for you. We've got an introduction in here, history, philosophies, some nice reading material in there for you. Some inspirations, how to use this book. That is always a good thing. Um, working, methods of working. So yearly practice we've got there. Um, deck of icons, spiritual and personal development, creative prompts, um, means of deepening your relationship with nature. So a very inspirational kind of uh, deck there, how to work with this deck so we can get um, a spread there. Let me see if it has a little, there's no diagrams of spreads in here. Um, not from what I see, uh, but you can see about cleansing and preparing your deck and all that kind of thing. So it does have spreads in there, but no actual uh, diagram of the spreads themselves. So uh, let's see, we have now we start to get into, oh, here we do. We actually, here we go. We do have some pictures of some spreads now. We've got the bridge between the earth and the sky. We've got a tree spread there. Okay, so there we go. So we do actually have some pictures. So a lot of words and a few pictures. So for this there, so there we go. But yeah, so we've got some interesting things. Oh, some more. Oh, actually, they do have quite a few of uh, pictures of spreads in there, so that's always nice. So then we get into some yearly. Let's flip ahead here because we're not going to flip through the whole book. We'll be here until next Christmas. So uh, let's pick out. Here we go. Card number nine, the voice of the moon. We've got a description. We've got keynotes there. Uh, symbology. Guidance as an icon, wow, a lot of information, as a portal, practice, creative prompt, ecological connection. Wow, that is a lot of information for one card. Next card there is the infinite web. We've got keynotes again, symbology, guidance. Wow, so there is like three or four or five pages out of this book for each card. That is a lot 
of information. So you, there is a number of different ways that you can use this deck. So it's actually going to be quite interesting. Um, probably take me a while to, um, you know, go through everything and to figure out uh, what everything means, how I'm going to use it and that kind of thing. But um, hey, I'm up for the challenge, a little bit of Christmas reading. So beautiful, beautiful, very thick, and it looks like a very informative deck uh, book there for this deck. Now this deck is circular. Okay. So, um, and that's actually kind of one of the reasons I was interested in it because I've got a few other circular decks. So, and you know, um, of course when we're working with energy and channeling information and all that, sometimes, you know, that energy of circular energy, right? Things flow back again or things repeat themselves or you know, cycles and all that kind of thing. So it can actually be really quite interesting to work with cards in that energetic circle. So circular cards can certainly help in that regard too. So I'm not going to lie. These are fairly large. Okay. Now I have, um, I have fairly long fingers. Um, you know, and I've got fairly decent sized hands. And uh, so this fits my entire palm here. Uh, so, you know, if you've got really small hands, okay, this is going to be one of those decks where you're probably, you might be able to shuffle it, um, you know, from hand to hand over hand, you're probably going to have some trouble riffle shuffling. If you do riffle shuffle, I don't riffle shuffle mine because it destroys the cards. Um, but if you do riffle shuffle, you probably have a little bit of a challenge doing that with this one because you're going to have to, you know, put your, get your fingers right over top of those. So anyway, so the size of it is, um, you know, kind of interesting. It's quite large, but let me just see if I can get the cellophane off. Okay, there we go. All right, so very pleased, by the way, that even though my box did not have, have cellophane on, the deck did. So I'm pleased with that. So anyway, so the bottom part of the box, again, just um, hard box there. Nothing really that interesting on the inside. So the back of the cards there, everyone's always interested in the back. And it looks like we've got some crazy looking spider web in there. We've got a little bit of kind of metallic sheen on there. These are not gilded. Okay, but it is a little bit of a metallic uh, kind of sheen on this crazy looking little spider web. I think that spider, when he did that, was a little bit drunk, but kind of cool. So let's get into the cards. First, we'll have a look at the card stock itself. So it's, you know, it's not too, too bad. It's not like, you know, it is fairly flexible. Okay, it's not like a super stiff uh, deck there if I compare it to... If any of you have the Muse Tarot, these are um, more cardboardy, okay, on these. And so these are a little bit thicker than what this would actually be. But it's they've got um, a pretty decent sheen on them. So they've got uh, pretty good lamination on them there. So you can see they are a little bit shiny. Okay, but not uh, not crazy. I've got a couple of decks here where you know you really have to be careful where you put them in the light because they'll just shine a light in your eye. Okay, so not too bad. Um, you know the cardstock is a little bit flimsy, but it seems to be kind of the order of the day these days for a lot of them. So let's have a look at the cards, and I'm going to zoom in for you guys a little bit. Actually, I'm not. I'm actually going to pull this a little bit closer. And I'm just going to make sure that you can see it. There we go. Okay. So I'll hold them up too. So card number one, we've got the dark solstice sun. Card number two, you don't know where you are, but you are free. This is card three, the dawn that follows the prolonged night. So it looks like it's got like some imagery where you can really sit and stare and absorb the images that you see a little bit of a prompt down there. And as you see, as you saw earlier, when we look at the book, there's like four or five pages of information about this card, depending on what it is that you're looking for to extract out of that. But you could very easily, um, you know, just sit with the card and absorb the image in um, in there for you 
primary nourishment is card number four. Five, the living mountain. Kind of like how, you know, even though this is an oracle deck and it is connected with nature, I do actually like how they made number five a mountain. Um, fives typically do represent those challenges in life that we are um, that we are faced with. Okay, the mountains that we need to climb, the obstacles that we need to um, overcome to get to the next stage of our journey or to find our path. And, um, you know, and so fives do traditionally um, reflect that, right? Also opportunity for change. Okay. So, um, I also read, uh, Lenormand and things. And so fives, of course, um, mountains, now the five doesn't represent the mountain, but the mountains themselves also represent those challenges. So I do like that connection with the numerology in there, whether that's by accident or design. Every star is a doorknob. <clears throat> Guided by Polaris, number seven. A swan in a crowd of crows, card number eight. Nine, the voice of the moon. Actually, that moon is quite cute. It's got eyes on the moon. <clears throat> The infinite web. There's the drunk spider from the back of the cards. <laughs> so uh, the infinite web, everything is all connected. All intelligent tentacles, card number 11. This one's interesting. Card number 12, licking dew from green leaves. Hmm, interesting. 13. Your delight charms the world. Beautiful. A lot of eyes. Uh, and quite a few of these cards. We do have like hidden eyes there somewhere. So um, that'll be interesting to look up in the book. Number 14. The chasm shrinks as you step across. Every step you take gets you closer to your goal. All right. So... 15, your pinky finger turns into a bird. Hmm, interesting. That'll be curious to see what the book has to say about that one. Our pinky finger seems to be the forgotten finger sometimes. Card 16, a charmed leap. Looks like it's filled with inspiration. A swarm of bees, number 17. Well, that kind of like draws you in. Uh, it looks like a little bit of a tunnel, actually, uh, if you kind of stare at it for a minute. 18, a fierce desert flower. It's a prickly cactus right there. 19, the moss cauldron. Hmm, interesting. 20, your heart in sync with cricket song. 21, kissed by whale spray. 22, the Luminous Brew. 23. is card number 23. 24, the Juniper Catechus. 25, Touching the Star-Kissed Leaf. 25 in this one too. You are seen. Oh, well, there we go. There's the eyes. Number 26. 27, the exploding star. Oh, looks kind of cool. Interesting. 28, carried by current. 29, the coiled snake. 30. 31, the self-seeing eye. A little bit of introspection, going within, soul searching perhaps. The self-tending fire, 32. Actually, this one's kind of cool. I have no eyes in there again. 
I wonder if there's there's got to be some sort of um, very interesting symbology here with the eyes showing up all these ones. Of course, this one's self-tending, right? You're maybe still looking within or that fire within you, perhaps. Um, that's very interesting. Uh, this it looks like a bathtub, but it's got arms. So number 33, roots grow from your feet. Your ears become a butterfly, 34. Hmm, Refl uh, something to do with your listening skills, your ability to really hear and understand information, perhaps changing, um, you know, being able to be open to other people's perception, right? Butterflies uh, quite often signify change or transformation. So something to do with listening or hearing the messages. A thorn in the paw, 35, that looks relatively painful. Another mountain, card 36, clouds pass, but the mountains remains. Stability, perhaps, on this particular one. A fork in the river, 37, hmm, which path will you take? You are very much being watched in this one, too, by the looks of it. 38, they do not miss their seed pods. It's an interesting one. This is, of course, a dandelion when it goes to seed and all of those seeds going out into the universe to create their own um, flowers. So, interesting. 39, a peach so ripe. That tree, tree of wisdom. Interesting, being watched. Eyes, again. Number 40, in the garden of lost teeth. 41, the Calvin Glacier. Pick up the rest of them. 42, snake encircles the moon. 42, the wounded happy eagle, 43. 44, wingless, you fall into the sea. 45, your feet are two fish. Hmm, interesting. 46, the unburdened bones. 47, in the tunnels of our ancestors tunnel underneath the roots of that very wise old tree. 48, what the worms know. In the land of the vanished, number 49, a little hmm, rhinoceros with a moon background. Interesting. The hummingbird, a hummingbird in languor, 50. 51. The setting sun sings the song of unmaking. 51. It's got a little bit of hanged man vibes, chilling out, letting things go, just like maybe the sunset there, right? Things closing a chapter, perhaps. And whoop, 52. You are a multitude. Number 52. That's actually kind of really cute. It's like a little blob person, kind of there. Interesting. So that is the flip through of this deck. It looks very interesting. It looks like, um, you know, like I said at the beginning, if you sit with the cards and you absorb some of the imagery on some level, you may not necessarily need the book. Always handy if you do read the entire book and then work with the cards or just work with them one by one. Pull a card a day and then look up the meanings, the symbologies behind them. How does that connect with you in that day? What does that spark within you? So um, very kind of the, you know, very kind of calm and peaceful vibes for the most part that are coming off of um, this deck. So um, very interesting, um, little bit 
flowy uh, is that energy so far. So I'm going to have some fun um, uh, working with this one and seeing how things play out. So what do you like about the deck? What do you not like about the deck? Okay, so far I'm getting some pretty good vibes off of it. Okay, it's not really um, not really the artwork on there. I got to say it's not really usually what I'm drawn to. I'm not usually drawn to kind of the watery kind of um, things on there. Um, but I was drawn to this one. So anyways, um, so clearly there's a reason for that. So anyways, I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I will leave the link down in the box below um, if this does spark your interest and you want to go and click and make it easier for you to find where it is for you to purchase that. Okay, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you later. Bye.